Welcome to QD Video, brought to you by RoomNow.Live. I'm Jack Cush, executive editor of RoomNow.com. Our case today is a recent clinic case, a 50-year-old uh, African-American woman presents with knee problems, and the question here is, is this a torn meniscus or not? So her story is pretty simple. No medical history, never took any medicines, no joint problems. At the end of last summer, about six, seven months ago, car accident, she jammed her knee into the dashboard. Ever since, she's kind of a little, little problem, but not much, but about two months ago, it started to hurt more, started to swell a little bit. She went to her primary care doctor, did x-rays, showed some mild degenerative changes in the medial compartment, patellofemoral, DJD, a little, you know, sort of mild. She was treated with a non-steroidal, did fairly well, but didn't want to continue that, taking over-the-counter non-steroidals, doing fairly well, but she continues to have problems. She's a nurse, she's on her feet, she needs to, you know, get this over with. What are you going to do? So again, the question here is that she has simple osteoarthritis. She's a little young to have it, but she post-traumatic. Um, it's hard to imagine that, you know, you get those DJD changes of sclerosis and some joint space narrowing in, in about a few months. I guess it could happen. But does she really have another problem going on? And could she have had some other internal derangement of the left knee? So my checklist here is pretty simple. Um, you could go right ahead and not examine the patient and do an MRI, but that would not be smart medicine or good medicine. Uh, you know, as someone who has actually had a torn meniscus, I kind of know the symptoms. Uh, and the symptoms I look for, and you should look for, are locking, unexplained locking, which means everything's good and all of a sudden the joint seizes up. It used to happen to me laying down while totally relaxed, it would seize up. Or while walking, the joint gives out or gives way uh, and the patient almost falls. And the question is, you don't know why this happened and it's, a, it's sort of a repeated event. And because that happens, you need a medical evaluation. The physical findings that are most predictive and helpful, number one, joint line tenderness. This assumes you know actually where the joint line is and have a good, a good history on a, a good clinical skills that you can find it. But if they're not tender or mildly tender, but when you hit the joint line, you accentuate the tenderness, that could be an extruded meniscus that's tender. Um, and then also, you know, the McMurray test, which you have to look up to learn how to do, but basically, you know, you, you flex the, the, the hip and the knee as far as you can, and while extending it, you torque the lower extremity to put pressure on one of those two menisci to see if you can get a pop or pain. Um, another finding is also the um, presence of an effusion. This patient had about a one to two plus effusion, cool, um, not really tender in itself, but clearly the joint was swollen. So I think she had enough uh, evidence to go ahead and get an MRI and refer her to orthopedics. Again, the literature uh, says some interesting things. One, the MRI is really good at ligamentous damage as opposed to meniscal damage. It can miss some things. So MRIs are better at you know, ACL, collateral ligaments, rather than, uh, and they're pretty good at, 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 at meniscal tears, but it's interesting to note that it's better at ligamentous tears. Um, when you look at the sensitivity and specificity, joint line tenderness is very sensitive, 75%, but not so specific at 27%. On the other hand, um, McMurray test is 97% specific, but not so sensitive. And so the point being that if you can have either giving way or locking along with a physical finding, that's a really good reason to go ahead and get an MRI or refer to the orthopedist for further evaluation. So that's my story of meniscal tears. Um, I ended up having surgery way too late, but nonetheless, that's another story. Um, Room Now Live, check it out. It's gonna be really interesting. You can still come to the meeting, uh, March 22, 23, 24. It probably costs you about 1,000 to $1,500 to fly in, register, spend a few nights, uh, learn a whole lot, and enjoy the hell out of the meeting. Um, but then again, you don't have to spend that money. You can register and watch it all from home in your pajamas just uh, it's going to be streaming live on those days 22 23 24 in march check it out